everyone, and welcome to a quick tutorial on how you can create a magic loop for crochet, which is particularly useful if you're looking to create a circular design that doesn't have an unsightly gap in the middle. But let's have a little look at what we need to do. Okay, so I've got my yarn and I've got my hook, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a tail of about 8 to 10 inches, just so that I've got plenty of space to work with. I'm going to come back along the yarn a little way, and then I'm going to set it up exactly the same way that I would if I was working on a project at the moment. So for me, I like to wrap the yarn around my ring finger, go up over my index finger like so, and then I'm going to wrap the yarn just a couple of times around my middle finger so that I've got a couple of loops on there, and it's around these little loops that we're going to create our magic circle. So what you're going to do is you're going to insert your hook underneath all of those little loops, grab your yarn and pull through, like so. And then from here you can start to create however how many chains it is that your pattern needs. So for argument's sake, let's say we are making a granny square, I'm going to need to make three little chains exactly the same as I usually would. There we go, three little chains on there. And from there I can actually slip this little arrangement completely off my finger now. Hopefully you haven't put it on there so tight that this is a bit of a fight, but it should come off reasonably simple to leave you with this little circle. And from here, we can just work all of our stitches into this rather large gap that we have in our hoop. So for granny squares, I'm going to need to start making trebles. So I'm going to wrap my yarn around my hook, insert through that massive great big hole, you can't really miss it, go underneath all of those little cords that make up our hoop, grab your yarn and pull through, grab and pull through two, grab and pull through two, making trebles the same as we did do in the last tutorial. And I'm just gonna keep going until I have made the entire first row of a granny square. If you're wondering what it is that I'm up to, don't worry, this is actually gonna be the next tutorial. For now, we're just focusing on the magic loop itself. But follow whatever pattern you've got. If it tells you you need 10 trebles, then just create 10 trebles into this space. If you need half trebles, then create those. But I'll start off a granny square and I'll meet you back at the end once I've done these so I can show you how to finish off this loop. And now that I've created a few more stitches, you can actually see exactly how these magic loops work. All of these stitches around this hoop are actually really quite free. They will slide and bunch up together on there. So you can see how at the end of it, when we pull the cord tight, it's going to squeeze them all in together. Okay, so there's all the stitches that I need to put onto this hoop. It is time to finish it off and close up that gap in the middle. Now, when I pull on this tail, you should see that one of these little cords, which is making up my magic hoop, is going to shorten. As soon as I see which one shortens, I'm going to stop. So I just give that a little tug. Okay, so I can see that that one at the top there, that shortened a little bit. So I'm going to stop for a moment. And instead, I'm going to pull on that cord that was shortening to pull through the other cord, as you can see. So I've ended up with just one extra loop there, and that extra loop is attached to the tail. So now when I pull the tail, that one disappears. As you can see, and now if I pull the tail nice and tight, it will tighten up significantly and we'll get rid of that gap that was in the middle. Closing up our magic loop. Okay, so just to show you that again, I'm going to tug on this tail and we should see that one of these cords that makes up our hoop is going to shorten. So if I pull the tail, there we go, so we can see that that one at the back there has become shorter. And so what I can do is I can now pull on this little cord that was getting shorter and I will see the other hoop start to vanish through. Like so. And then if I pull on the tail again, the remaining cord will go. Just like so. And now if I pull on that tail nice and tight, the hole vanishes completely. And then from here, I can now reinsert my hook into my project, tighten it up a little bit, and finish off this little row. And this is what we end up with. One nice little circular pattern starting off 
with no big gap in the middle. Same as you would have got if you'd been using chains, for example. The magic loop just gives you a much neater finish. But I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial just on how to make magic loops. Happy crocheting, everybody, and I will see you again soon. Bye bye!